So Treasurer, thank you very much for your contribution to our cases. I'm Wendy, a GP, Treasurer Pharmacologist, and we're going to talk about psychotropic medication, the issues that arise when we're using these in breastfeeding. So Treasurer, if we could start please with the woman who has been prescribed during pregnancy. So she is already on a psychotropic medication. Now she's transitioning. This life within her is real. It's screaming, it's crying, it's hungry. Should she be alarmed about breastfeeding her child? And generally the answer is no. There should be lots and lots and lots of reassurance. Um, if you think about it, what baby is getting is a thimbleful through the breast milk compared with the bucket full, particularly if mum was using the psychotropic in the latter stages of the pregnancy. And what we can avoid uh, by breastfeeding, particularly in that first two to four weeks postpartum, is that we can avoid some of the withdrawal symptoms or at least ameliorate these um, in baby. And um, that can prevent um, significant harm where the mum may be vulnerable with a mental health disorder. Uh, we've got to separate out the two scenarios, the woman that was on the drug during the pregnancy, um, transitioning to breastfeeding, versus the mum who um, starts the psychotropic postpartum. Postpartum. So there's this real protective effect of the drug in the breast milk in the first scenario, um, versus the second where we have to start thinking about well what is the risk versus benefit for baby being exposed at all. Mm -hmm. And again, um, there is nothing to say in either scenario that it's a problem, but sometimes when the, the baby is a real entity as opposed to mum being pregnant with a fetus um, and they can touch and feel the, this infant that suddenly uh, they become so much more concerned and they require a lot more reassurance. And in that scenario, we can sometimes employ some simple strategies to offset the, um, the quantum of drug that comes across mm -hmm. into the milk. So the specific advice there would be? Okay, so if you think about um, basic pharmacokinetics and an immediate release dose form, so a tablet, a capsule, a mixture, as, and so I'm not talking at the moment about a controlled release dose form because there you get a constant plasma level and you can't um, adjust the feeding in association with the dose. But with your standard tablets and capsules, on average you'll get a peak of the drug in the plasma, the maternal plasma, within about an hour of having had the dose. And then it will very, very quickly partition across into the milk. Once it peaks in the milk and the amount that gets across depends upon um, the extent of plasma protein binding, um, volume of distribution, the lipophilicity of the drug. If it's very lipophilic um, and most CNS active drugs are lipophilic because they've got to get across the blood brain barrier. So they tend to like to partition into the milk but they only stay there for a limited period of time. As soon as you reach your peak in the milk, it starts to partition back very quickly because it's mum's liver and kidneys that are going to be chomping up the drug through this, this compartment. And so we're interested in the relative infant dose over the 24 hour period. And the American Academy of Pediatrics uses a figure of less than 10% of the weight adjusted maternal dose as being compatible with breastfeeding and just about all psychotropics with the exception of perhaps lithium would fall into that category. So there's really very few drugs that are used in mental health that we can't work around in the breastfeeding setting. But if we employ um, our knowledge of pharmacokinetics and the fact that you'll get this peak within about an hour then the level will drop to about 50% of that peak within about four hours after the dose. So if mum, um, for example, has her SSRI every morning, then basically what she needs to do is um, give baby a big feed, take her morning dose, avoid feeding for four hours, and then she can feed on demand for the rest of the 24 hour period until the cycle repeats again. And by doing that, you can drop that milk um, exposure by up to 50%. Now, as I said, in the woman who 
has been using the psychotropic during the pregnancy, we want to avoid that because we want to avoid um, or ameliorate the withdrawal symptoms. But in the baby that doesn't need to be exposed to the medicine, um, this is a very useful technique because it tends to improve adherence, maternal adherence, by thinking she's got some control mm -hmm. and she's not powerless um, in exposing her baby to this medicine. And often that, that's something that um, a clinician can employ very successfully. So newborns, of course, feed very frequently. Yes. Um, we would actually want to use proactively that, mm -hmm. that a higher dose, yeah. but realistically probably it won't matter just she has the medication exactly. when it suits, suits her, her baby will feed probably within two or three hours, hours. Of, of that regardless of when she last fed uh, and baby will be getting that thimble full yep. which will help but for perhaps a, a mother further along the track with a diagnosis of postnatal depression we can introduce that for a better controlled um, if situation. If mum is anxious. About the dose. Yes. There is no need to make life more difficult mm -hmm. for everyone yes. um, um, if mum's happy to breastfeed. But if there's some hesitancy, if there's a barrier, then that can be a way of overcoming that and keeping the mum stable on her medication. So perhaps a preemptive strike before the mother-in-law mm -hmm. or the blogs or the internet or yeah. the CMI mm -hmm. makes that mother very anxious that this is not a safe thing to expose her baby to. We can say you can reduce the total amount of drug that your baby receives by, by this, strategy. this strategy. Exactly. Okay, but from a pharmacologist's perspective, these are safe medications to use exactly. while breastfeeding. You have no concern or hesitation except lithium. And the issue yeah. with lithium? Lithium, even though it's watery, it's hydrophilic, mm -hmm. so you'd think there wouldn't be that much that gets across, but because it's such a small molecule, it actually has very high plasma levels. And because the um, infant is still developing thyroid function, mm -hmm. it makes them more vulnerable to um, the exchange between lithium and iodine. Right. And so we try and um, avoid lithium. Well, it, it's probably the one that if you're asking me out of this whole toolbox that I might be concerned about, it's the one that probably concerns me most and I try right. and avoid if I can use an alternative. And we perhaps would defer yeah. there to the mental health team or exactly. um, the yeah. So there could well be um, an anti-epileptic medicine mm -hmm. that could be used in its, in its place. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.